once again I hear somebody that I listen to now and again falling for the same false information explanation because they don't seem to understand what a metaphor is when somebody's comparing something to something else to another object or something that's recently happened uh, and this is so clear it takes place a few times during the book now I'm not an expert on the Bible I've read it one and a half times but I can refer to the main verses in an argument or when I'm making a video like this the most important ones now I am going to play a, a verse from Ezekiel I'll even throw in something from the book of giants and the book of Enoch I do happen to think that at least the book of Enoch is real yeah, it's in the I forgot which nation it is now, but anyway, a country in Africa, it's in their their own Bible, their own history. And we know that many books were removed from what we've got today. There's only 66, okay. Now, when I say that it's a shame, because most Christians operate through faith and faith alone, whereas I just operate through absolute knowing. I've got absolutely no doubt at all about creation and fantastic verses like this. I don't need to rely on scientific explanations. I can just rely on what the pages lay out themselves when it's so blatant. Just because it's fantastical and it doesn't seem to go along with modern chronology. The Book of the Prophet Ezekiel Chapter 31 and it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, and to his multitude, Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches, and with a shadowing shroud, and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great, the deep set him up on high, with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and he hath shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. And strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him. Upon the mountains and in all the valleys his branches are fallen, and his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land, and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches to the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height, all the drink water. For they are all delivered unto death, to the nether parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when he went down to the grave I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof, and the great waters were stayed. And I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall, when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him, unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm, that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. 
This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. Now, Devil Tower, it was obviously a large tree, but compared to what we've just been listening to there, I don't even think that we can imagine something that large. And when a tree like that would fall on the earth, it would cause such devastation that you're talking about the end of life, basically. Uh, and it's my belief that the waters, the four rivers that led from Eden, which are showed on the world map, I, it's, well, it's my belief that there were no sea water at that point. All the sand that we see today came from the erosion of trees like Assyrian or the literal tree of life or tree of knowledge which fell. And that's where all the salt came from which is in the oceans today which will have killed off all these giant trees anyway. Sea water kills trees off. I don't, I'm not even sure that they can petrify. But either way, we're not looking at the same type of wood that's around today. It was silica. Who's to know that it didn't even grow like that? You know, something similar to Avatar. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit, that the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth.